Psychology, aren't you, Doc? Merely a hobby? Uh, you still haven't got me pegged, have you? Oh, it's coming. Well, maybe I can refresh your memory. Constitutional psychopathic interior. Does that ring a bell? It's a clinical term referring to certain mental disorders. According to Rouse and his the clinical psychopath in society, it's a term applied to individuals who cannot or will not differentiate between right and wrong. Well, you seem to know a great deal about the subject. Why would it interest you? It's a uh, pretty nice place you got here, huh? Oh, playing games, eh? Oh, games? I suppose it uh, depends on which end of the gun you're at. And I'm going to use it. Why kill me? 
Because five years ago at Folsom Prison, you called me a constitutional psychopathic inferior. Edward Jocko Townsend. Yeah, now you're with it, Doc. Edward Jocko Townsend, the pride of San Antonio, in the purple trunks. The guy whose parole you loused up with your big words. Did you read my report? Yeah, I read it. All of it? I read enough of it. Well, if you'd have read it in its entirety, you would have known that I recommended you be removed from Folsom and sent to another institution where you could receive specialized treatment. Oh, what do you think? You want a medal? If hadn't been for you, I'd have been out of that place five years ago. Oh, no. You were a confused person then, and I... I'm afraid you still are. Oh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not confused. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I really checked you out, Doc. I know exactly the minute that you were born. And at exactly 9.28, that's about an hour from now, I'm going to celebrate your birthday by drilling a hole in your head. Chacun a son goût. It's French. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> An idiom. Freely translated means we all get our kicks in different ways, right? Oh, very freely translated, yes. Really kind of amazes you, doesn't it? You don't have the monopoly on languages. No, it doesn't surprise me in the least. I can't say I recall your linguistic talents, but I have a very clear impression of your potential. If I'm not mistaken, your IQ was in the neighborhood of... Uh... 172. And that's not the neighborhood, Doc. That's the house. 172. That's the upper 3%. You know what I've been doing with that IQ the last five years? Let me tell you. I've been putting it to work. Every stinking book in that prison library, and now I got it all right here. Now, your big words aren't big enough. Because I got more up here than you have, Rand. Yeah. Not just French. I know six languages. And all the sciences I'm ever going to need. Well, I'm delighted that my intervention had some beneficial effect. My only regret is that your education did not spill over to include the humanities. Oh! oh. I got all that, too, chum. I read everything from Beowulf to Dylan Thomas. It wasn't enough to get me off the track. The one that's going to end for you here tonight. Then you're not here to do away with me. Merely to assert your intellectual equality? Oh, come on, now. quit conning me. I know why I'm here. You may think you do. You still sell me short, don't you, Doc? I said, I know. I'm here to put a hole in that skull of yours to let out a lot of that hot air that was responsible for me spending five years up there at that prison. When did you get out of prison? About a week ago. What have you done since then? Oh, I, uh, spent most of the time getting set up for you. That really makes me a psychopath, doesn't it, Doc? Did you know that revenge is the most normal drive in the world? Read a book, any book. Sooner or later, somebody always gets even with somebody else, even in the Bible. And the same book says that murder is against every law. Oh, which is normal, Doc? The need for revenge is the law that says you can't have it. Society has to protect itself against the extremes of human behavior. <laughs> you really don't know anything about me at all. I read your report made to the parole board. Uh, what do social workers know about people? Entire life has been one of extremes. Just tell me, why do you think I go to extremes? Probably a complicated set of circumstances and experiences. A man is always the sum of his experiences. All right, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I could explain it to you better if I could show you something in my laboratory. I 
you see these two photographs up here? They are two bullets. Both the same caliber, the same weight, propelled by the same powder charge and fired from the same pistol. Now, these two bullets are almost like personalities. Now, you notice the grooves at the base? That is what is known as right flank. Yes. <laughs> Marks of an experience. Now, the perfect one was fired into that baffle box right behind you. And the other one? Oh, it had a different experience. It was deformed. Experiences can deform personalities also. You're never gonna fix this bullet up, Doc. That sword will never be the same. Personalities can be fixed. By locking them up? By putting them somewhere where they can't hurt themselves or other people and then trying to help them. You're a phony, Doc. You're a three-dollar bill. Why? Because five years ago up at Folsom, when you were playing God with my life, I needed your help. Why didn't you help me then? I tried. Oh, sure you did. You double-talked the parole board and voting your way. Give five more years to old Jocko. Well, do you know how long five years is, friend? It's 86,400 seconds a day multiplied by 1,825 days, and then you square that. And when you're on the inside, each second stretches itself out because time is the only dimension. I call that Jocko's Law. My report recommended that you be given professional treatment. And did that report say that my wife waited for me for five years hoping that that parole would come through? And did it say that the day the committee turned me down, my marriage died? I'm sorry. If I'd known, I... You know why you didn't know? Because you didn't ask. You just went up there, you collected your money, and then you cleared out. Smug little defender of society. That's not the way it was. Yes, that's exactly the way it was, I know, because I've got it engraved in my gut. Well, don't tell me. I'll tell you when it's night, 28. Oh, you're a very disturbed young man. But mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing wrong with me, I'm just fine. All right, then let us say that your outlook has been warped. You know why it's worked? You know why? Because the world is full of little creeps with pat hands, people like you, vegetables who sit life out on the sidelines. And then when they pass judgment on the jockos or anybody who gets involved, you're hung up. Because you got nothing to fall back on except your own miserable existence. Well, you don't have to commit murder in order to know that it's immoral or that it's not normal. Normal? You think what you did is normal? Well, you're nothing. You're not skim milk. You're not cream. You're homogenized. You're nothing. I'm a trained observer of human behavior. I do not have to participate in order to evaluate things. A people watcher, huh? You might call it that. You still think you got a pat hand, don't you, buddy? Well, I'm calling you. I'd better answer that phone. No, you don't. Just a minute. If I don't answer that phone, you'll have a carload of police here within five minutes. The police department are expecting my opinion on those photos. So you're not at home? Oh, that would never work. Inspector Jenkins knows that I would never go out on such an important case without leaving a message for him. All right, answer the phone. But remember, you got till 928. Unless you do something to get me off schedule. Hello? Dr. Hyatt? Speaking. This is Dr. Smythe. Congratulations and many happy returns. Oh, thank you, Dr. Smythe. Thank you very much. I wonder if you'd like to go to a performance of Torrando next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? Tell him you'd be delighted. I, I'd be delighted. Oh, I, I have to consult my calendar first. Why not ring me back in the morning? Oh, I'll do that. Congratulations again, and good night. All right, move over there. She'll be there. She should be here now. You want to leave your number? I'll call back. Well, who 
who is Evelyn? Your wife? You still seeing her? That's my business, pal. That's what I thought you said that... Yeah, I know, I did. She left me. It's all over with. It's finished. We just went out on a date, that's all. I gather it didn't go very well. No, I went just fine. Something hadn't lost me. Something's always lost for me. Do you ever stop to ask yourself why? I don't have to ask why. It's a lot. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Tell me about it. You're not stalling me, you know. We still got a half an hour to kill. Hey! <laughs> How do you like that, huh? Half hour to kill, that's pretty funny, isn't it? Yeah, I'm a poor man's Voltaire. Humor out of tragedy. You like that, huh? <laughs> you like it? Um, tell me about your bad luck. You know why I went to prison? With a bomb in a man's car. Yeah, but you know why? No. Because I bought a chicken at the supermarket, and when I got it home and unwrapped it, you could smell it for a mile. So I took it back. And the clerk told me I had to have the manager's okay in order to exchange it. Well, his manager was a young guy, see? Must have been his first job as manager, because he thought he was a big man. You know what he did? No, I haven't any idea. Well, he told me that unless I had a receipt showing I bought it from his store, I couldn't exchange it. That's kind of procedure at most markets. Yeah, but I lost the receipt, see? This happens to us all once in a while. But he didn't have to loud talk and wisecrack and get a crowd up, did he? Maybe he'd feel like a fool him at least. Oh, you were only imagining that. However, oh, they were all on his side. They were all laughing at me. Did it ever occur to you that you might have misunderstood their laughter? I didn't misunderstand anything. Look, you were embarrassed. He was insecure and inexperienced. It must have shown some of them were laughing at him. They were laughing at me. Look, you don't just kill a man for laughing at you. Oh, I did. At least I tried to. I went home and I cooked up a bomb. I took it back and put it in his car. All he had to do was turn on the ignition. You know what happened? Yes, I read the report. Some solid citizen blew the whistle on me and I went to prison. You were very fortunate. Oh, you think so? Yes, I do, because if that bomb had gone off, they would have sent you to the gap jam. There's one thing about a bomb, Doctor. It doesn't leave any evidence. Oh, let me help you, Townsend. You have problems you cannot solve by yourself. Yeah, I do need your help, Doc. I do. Thanks for the offer. Now you're making sense. I want you to help me with a little chemical problem. Oh, you need psychiatric help. All I need is an extra pair of hands. Be smart. You, you've complied with the law ever since you left prison. You know the formula for nitroglycerin. You can't be serious. I want you to make me 25 cc's of it. That ought to be just enough to do this job. Not a chance. According to my watch, you've got 28 minutes left. I could cut that to 28 seconds now. How about it? Doc, if you want to kill me, get it over with. But I'm not going to give you something that you can hurt innocent people with. My neighbors have nothing to do with your vendetta. You're going to make that nitro, Doc, because you figure if you can drag this thing out long enough, somebody's going to get you off the hook. You make a mistake, Doc. I know that formula backwards. Have you ever killed anyone before? In the army? Plenty of times. Made your skin crawl, didn't it? You're trying to make the point that I haven't got it in me to kill you, just whistling, chum. I kill just fine. Like a Hemingway bullfighter, nice and clean. Oh. By the way, what uh, outfit were you with in the army? The paratroopers, now quit your stalling. Who's that, Doc? A friend, perhaps. Uh, after all, this was supposed to be a birthday celebration. Well, whatever he's bringing, it would have been better off sending it by mail. Doctor? Hey, anybody home? Uh, I'm in the laboratory. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Doctor. Why now, Jen? Oh, hey, Doctor, I forgot to tell you. Exhibit A there doesn't have any bullets in it. 
Well, that won't work. I loaded it myself this morning. Yeah, well, I just unloaded it while you were concentrating on the nitro. <laughs> recipe for salad dressing. She had to kill me. He Hello, Ev. Evie? Jocko? Yeah. I'm working with Jocko. How many times have I asked you? Oh, yeah, I know, honey, but look, I won't do it again. I just had to talk to you, that's all. Listen to me, Jocko. It's no use. I can't take any more. I thought you might have changed, but I was wrong. But you weren't wrong. Oh, but that was a mistake, Abby. Honest, I'll never do it again. Listen, I just couldn't stand the way that guy was looking at you. That's the only reason I hit him, so help me. Somebody better help you, Jocko. It's obvious I can't. They're not worth it. How do you know what anything is worth to me? Uh, what Mr. Sills means, and I couldn't help overhearing your conversation, is that we only defeat ourselves when we hurt others. And if your relationship with your wife is, well... Who said it with my wife? Sorry, I assumed that... All right, it was my wife. My ex-wife, thanks to you. Oh? Are you sure you're not just looking for a scapegoat? Someone to blame for your own inability to hold on to her? Oh. Now we're trying the old sledgehammer approach, huh? Not chipping away at Jocko's morale. But you gotta do better, because there's nothing wrong with Jocko in that department. No, sir. Jocko and the women? That's a two-piece set, buddy. <laughs> Man after my own heart. Don't believe me? No, I envy you. Maybe, maybe not always. Maybe when I was a kid, I did more talking than doing. I'll tell you something. Once the war came along, I was in business, yes, sir. <laughs> and I still am. Even with Evelyn the other night. Divorced or not, she went out with me. And not out of pity, if that's what you're thinking. No, sir. Now, all Jocko, still the man. Oh, you got to try your luck. After all, there's no reason why you shouldn't have the satisfaction of beating me on all levels. It's your move, Doctor. Hello, come on. Speaking. This is Inspector Jenkins. Oh, yes, Inspector. What's the verdict on that ballistic comparison? Same gun fired both bullets. Have you written your report? It's waiting for you. Good. I'll send the man right over. Uh, uh, well, uh, as it so happens, I, I was just on my way out, Inspector. Uh, would the morning be all right? All right. There'll be a man there around nine. <laughs> Good night, Inspector. Take you two back in there to finish cooking up that little nitro explosive. You're gonna know you were blown to bits by a better man. And even though you once called it psychopathically inferior, a better mind. A mind that doesn't forget anything. How long were you in the paratroops? Four years. Now you told me a few minutes ago that you once killed a man during the war. How do you know? Got a hat full of metal, suppose. 200 yards, the whole thing's a little impersonal. And you can't be certain if you even hit what you aimed at. 
Oh, I got a guy a lot closer than 200 yards, Doc. <laughs> it was a long time ago. How can anyone possibly remember? Oh, didn't I tell you, Doc? I got total recall. It was in Normandy on the 12th day of June. My company was on the high ground just north of San Xavier Le Vicon. The company commander was a captain named Love, Joe Love. First sergeant's name was Evan. Squad leader's name was Carl Shortreed. There were 180 guys when we started out that morning. Evan's serial number was 18086004. From Beaumont, Texas, married to a girl named Francine. They had a couple of kids, both of them boys. <laughs> Billy Joe and Elmo. Yeah, we were going up against the Herman Goering 2nd Panzer Grenadiers. It was an SS outfit, and they were rough. Boy, they were rough. 7.15 that morning, we shoved off. And can you imagine? A company trying to take a town away from a whole battalion. Oh, we hadn't gone ten feet and they hit us with a kitchen sink. SP guns, screaming memes, tanks, mortar, small arms fire. First half day, they got 126 of us. 73 dead and the rest of them wounded. Tank support never arrived. And the SS boys closed in and by, by sundown, there were 12 of us left holed up in a cellar. They found us. They started trying to blast us up. They got seven of us. And then when the firing died down and they were picking up their wounded, I, I heard one of their aid men yell, Herr Alfman is tot. Oh, I, I told the guys to scatter, and one by one they slipped out, all except me and this kid named White, a kid from Kansas, Alec White. Serial number 1676-3303. And then, when the fireworks started again, we ducked out, we, we made a run for it. And we hit out in a barn. What happened then? There was a German in that barn. And he kept calling, help me, help me, and growling. Somebody had to go and kill him, otherwise he would have brought him down on us. And you? Yeah. Yeah, I crawled over to him, and all the time I was putting my hands around his throat, he was crying, saying, Nein, Nein, God help me. And every time he'd open his mouth to yell, I could see he had a gold filling in his head. And then when I began to tighten down on his throat, he started to wiggle. Do you have any idea how long a guy wiggles when he's being strangled? Seventeen years, that's how long. Seventeen years. What did you think about? I thought... Goodbye, Chaco. You just died. Dial six digits, it takes seven. I've been watching you. Oh, tell me, Townsend. You said you knew the formula for nitroglycerin. What is it? Oh, Doc, you fractured me. Nitroglycerin, a nitrate of glycerol obtained by mixing glycerol with a mixture of sulfuric and nitric acids. Chemical formula C3H5NO2 to the second power. Remarkable. Part of your legacy from the prison library, I take it. Yeah, that's right. I got the whole scam, proportions and all. All right, then. What's the next step? Wash it, Doc. Wash it. What a waste. All that native intelligence being put to no constructive use. Take that chess game in there. You had the ability to win, but not the patience. You just didn't have the time, Doc. We're on a very tight schedule, remember? You and Bunny Boy here are going to blast off exactly at the stroke of 928, and that's uh, 14 minutes from now. What makes you think this won't be a standoff? Oh, you mean when the nitro's finished, what's to keep you and the Doc from bluffing me out with it? Something like that. Because you two want to live. We sure do. And me? I'm not so particular. Lager, hold it. You never quit trying, do you? Well, someone's calling me on the phone and I don't answer. The only one I was worried about was that cop, Inspector Jenkins, of the do-it-yourself ballistic society, but you already took care of him. Aren't you making a mistake, Townsend? You don't let him answer that phone, somebody makes no trouble. You don't let me worry about that, buddy. 
And you, Doc, you just keep swinging with that nitro. <laughs> Operator, that party still doesn't answer. Will you try it again, please? But, sir, your party does not answer. Well, are you sure you're dialing it right? I'm sorry, sir. Your party does not answer. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mr. Jenkins, this is Don Corey. I'm sorry to bother you at home, but I'm a little concerned about Dr. Hyatt. Any particular reason? Well, I've been trying to reach him for the past 10 minutes, and I can't get an answer. He went out. How do you know? I talked to him not more than 20 minutes ago. Oh, well, was Jed there? Well, I think he answered the phone. Oh. All right, thank you, Inspector. Good night, Corey. <laughs> Okay, Doc. Stop the stirring and stop the spawning. six times before I ever got out of the fourth grade. Well, that follows, but how does that explain your aversion to them? All the respectable people had rat dogs. The rest of them didn't care. We move into a new neighborhood, my old man would go around and nail ten over all the rat holes except one. And then at night, he'd blow out the light and we'd sit there listening to the rats come in through that one hole. He'd hold a dog and my mother would hold me. And pretty soon there were rats all over the place. There were rats on my bed, over my feet, on the floor, every place. And then he turned the light back on again and let old Peso loose, and the slaughter began, and old Peso started chewing up those rats. But then later on, after a while, we thought all the rats were gone, you know? Well, I can understand your prejudice after an experience like that. Hey, you know, one night, we were making so much noise moving the furniture around that the neighbors thought that my old man was beaten up by mother and they called the cops. And you know, when the cops came, that we had to do a repeat performance, the cops laughed louder than my old man did. <laughs> yeah. I never will forget that that night. There was just one little rat left. And my dad picked up the dog. And he turned to me and he handed me a poker and he says, Here, kid, you kill this one. And that little rat moved up into the corner, stood up on his hind legs. And I didn't want to disappoint my dad, but I didn't want to kill the rat. I was three or four, maybe. Then one of the cops, he started to razz my old man. He says, Hey, the kid's scared of the rat. My old man says, No, he's not. No, he's just taking good aim. That's all. I thought, Maybe if I could just hit it off to the side, I'd satisfy my dad and I wouldn't kill the rat. And then just at the last second, the rat dodged and I scratched him all over the floor! What'd your mother say to that? Just keep spooning the nitro, Doc. Well, you can see I already have 25 cc's. Yeah, I know. I got eyes I can see. Your mother didn't like you, did she? What's my mother got to do with this? Depends on your answer to my question. She didn't say anything, she just looked at me. But later that night, when they thought I was asleep, they had a big fight about it. Did they fight often? They never stopped. 
Whose fault was it? How should I know? I'm just a kid. Yes, but kids know best of all, don't they, Jocko? They sense things. Was there ever any doubt in your mind that you were usually the issue that came between them? My old man always accused her of making me soft, but she said he was making me into a savage. And you were in the middle. They finally separated because of you. I don't know. Which one of them took you? She did. I saw my old man during the summer. How did she treat you? Oh, my feet never hit the ground for a year. Every time I'd fall down, she'd catch me on the first bounce. It was like a mother hen trying to hatch a doorknob. And when you were with your father, how did he treat you? If I'd broken my neck, he would have expected me to set it myself. Well, you know what your problem is, don't you, Jocko? I got no problem, Doc. You got the problem. <laughs> all right, don't worry. Don't worry, myself. Get the nitro, Doc! Hey, Doc, I can't find it! There it is. You get the picture, gentlemen? Takers? Be careful with that bottle. Why, what's the matter? Well, you could cause a spontaneous explosion. Hey, Doc, you're really a bundle of information, aren't you? Well, a lot of good is gonna do you. You see that heater over there? Go get it. I'll get it. Hey, you. I wasn't talking to you. Come here a minute. You're getting kind of jumpy, aren't you, kid? Maybe I ought to get rid of you first and save the nitro exclusively for the good doctor. Are you this tough without the gun? I'll get the heat out. Yeah, you're really itchy, aren't you? Okay, Doc. In there. I said, let's go. What for? Come on, kid. Let's go. Okay, Hercules. Take your brother here and go sit over in the corner. Doc, if you please. The heater right here. Well, now that you've established your ability to control the situation, I must say I'm quite impressed with the many facets of your mind. Don't snow me, Doc. I know what your opinion of me is. A great deal has happened during the past five years. You've discovered new worlds, books, ideas. You've admitted as much yourself. Yeah, but you don't believe it. You still think I'm some kind of a weirdo, and let me tell you something. I always know when I'm being laughed at. Well, that's not true. Granted, you have a problem, but it can be helped, Jocko. Why, even from a, a few superficial impressions, I'm convinced you're capable of adjusting. Adjusting? That's everybody's favorite word these days. Adjusting to what? Being free again. Starting a new life. Living with the truth about yourself, your family, even your manager. Uh, it's not good. Well, we're falling behind schedule. Hurry! This way, ladies and gentlemen, for ten cents, the ten foot of a dollar once in dime, you're gonna see Jocko, Jocko in the two squares. Hey, now, no pushing there, Mac, please. No shoving. Just wait. The ushers will take you right down to your seat. Yes, sir. This is a wild bit. It's an unprecedented bit. In fact, it is our one and only performance because for the grand finale, we're gonna blow up two thirds of the act. <laughs> What's the matter, fellas? Don't you like your billing? Oh, just great. How about you, Doc? You with us? No, I'm afraid so. Yeah, I thought you would be. But just in case you two don't get the complete picture, I'm going to diagram it for you. Now, you say you two are going to be in the lab here, and this little bottle of nitroglycerin is going to be right here on the doorknob, the only door that leads into the place. <coughs> and so if you turn the knob from the inside, that bottle is going to hit the floor and then... Hello! And in case you think you're going to wait there until somebody will bail you out, I got that figured out, too. That's what the heat is for. I'm just going to push it right up there. Hey, Doc. Hey, boy. Quick. What's the explosive point? 260 degrees centigrade, remember? Any questions? Hey, how about you, Doc? You look thoughtful. Oh, I was just wondering about that soldier you strangled to in the war. 
Did you volunteer to do that? I might have. That's what your father would have wanted, isn't it? What's the difference? Oh, it makes a big difference. It's been a source of anguish to you ever since it happened, hasn't it? Because you're equally convinced that your mother would have been opposed to it. All right, now, Doc, let's not start that again. What would you personally have wanted to do? I told you what I did. I made a decision. I volunteered. No, no. Your personality was a battleground for your parents, and they're still fighting. Only now there are conflicts inside your mind. But you'll never satisfy them both, Jocko. Oh, that's what that was, huh? All that jazz about my welfare. You were just stalling, weren't you, Doc? I told you it was my birthday. Pe people are likely to drop in all night to congratulate me. It's probably Inspector Jenkins. He's not going to be here until the morning, smart guy. Well, he may have changed his mind. He wants those reports. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, gentlemen. We'll just invite him in. Oh, I guess we don't have to. You guys answer the phone. Who's he? Little Lord Fauntleroy. This is nitroglycerin. Put on your package and join the party. <laughs> Somebody hadn't told me, I wouldn't have believed it. What wouldn't you believe, Jocko? That so many people have the same lousy luck I have? Two innocent bystanders complicate things for you, don't they? Oh, you think so? Into the lab. Why kill two innocent men when you quarrels with me? Because I can't afford any witnesses. There'll be one witness. No, there won't. Nobody will know. You will. Stop conning me and get into the lab. What's his problem? <laughs> the doc will explain it to you. I'd much rather explain it to you, Jocko. You didn't want to kill anyone tonight. That's why you came here an hour early. I came here because I didn't want to miss the 928 deadline. Not really. You wanted to use that hour in order to flaunt your intellectual achievements, to make up for what you considered to be a defeat before the parole board five years ago. You might even have wanted to use that hour to talk out your aggressions so that you wouldn't have to kill. I'm going to kill because I want to. But why, Jocko? Why? To prove yourself? Shut up! Ah, that's it, isn't it, Jocko? You still regard every daily occurrence as a challenge to your masculinity. Shut up! Remember, Jocko, starting with the rat you didn't want to kill 25 years ago, and the man you felt compelled to strangle during the war. That also plagues you, doesn't it? The thing that's goading you the most was your wife leaving you. Oh. Oh! That was a crowning blow, wasn't it, Jocko? Because inside you know that it wasn't my fault or anyone else's, but simply that she couldn't live with a man who confused violence with virility. A man who was still trying to please a savage father. Isn't that why she won't see you after your behavior the other night? Isn't that why you're confused now, Jocko? Why you can't kill the innocent men? Because inside you're neither soft nor savage, but a very confused human being.
tell you he'd be back? That you did, Doctor. Hey! Oh, How'd you get out of the lab? Oh, Doctor, nitro's gonna go up! No, Jocko, no. You see, it wasn't really nitro. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. What? What do you think of Jocko's chances, Doctor? Yes, what about that, Carl? Wasn't it coming back to rescue us a good sign? No, oh, the best of signs, I say. Shows that our man had a sense of morality. That he no longer has to resort to violence in order to prove the fact that he is a man. But what I want to know is how did you manage to fool him with a chemical? <laughs> well, you know, I haven't had a mislabeled bottle of chemicals in my lab since I was a graduate student, but by a strange quirk of fate, yesterday I emptied one of the bottles of acid. I needed it to store a saline solution. So I filled it with a mild alkaline. Neutralizing the acid, huh? Precisely. Thereby creating an ineffective base for our friend Jocko's formula. You know, you could have saved me a lot of worry by letting me in on the secret. Chacun a son goût. Hmm? Uh, well, that's uh, French, you know. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Carl. Well, thank you, gentlemen. To the pride of San Francisco. In the tweed suit. <laughs>